Homo Naledi, the star man. In 2015, deep in a cave in Africa, the largest assemblage of remains from a single hominin species was discovered. These remains were considered to represent previously unknown human species, now called Homo Naledi. Let's take a thrilling journey through the enigmatic past of these remarkable human predecessors and unravel the captivating narrative of this ancient human ancestor. Stay with us as we learn about Homo Naledi's discovery, what they looked like, how they compared to other species, and many more interesting facts that make this species part of our human ancestry. Let's begin. The unexpected discovery of a new human ancestor in 2015 stunned scientists across the globe. The work was praised in the headlines for redefining our history and bridging gaps of the evolutionary record. Some even claim that it has the potential to completely alter everything that we know about our cultures and behaviors. To learn how this discovery was made, we need to travel back to the famously unlucky date, Friday the 13th of September, 2013. There is an isolated alcove known as the Denaledi Chamber that is very deep within the rising cave system of the Melmani Dolomites, located in the Blobank River Valley in South Africa. While exploring this place, cavers Rick Hunter and Stephen Tucker discovered a narrow chimney 39 feet long that led to an underground room. The surface of the room was covered in fossils. These men were part of a scouting team who reported possible interesting finds to paleoanthropologist Lee Berger of the University of Witwatersrand, South Africa. So after sending photographs of their discovery to Lee Berger and their geologist Pedro Boshoff, excavation work got underway. In what would later become the largest assemblage of fossils in Africa, 1,550 bones and teeth belonging to 15 different individuals, including juveniles, infants, and adults, were found during two brief trips that took place in 2013 and 2014. During the Dinaledi excavations in 2013, Hunter and Tucker discovered 131 remains of at least two adults and a juvenile in the neighboring Lesendi cave. These remains were discovered while they were searching around the cave. In 2017, these findings were presented in a separate publication. Both Dinaledi and Lesendi caves are located approximately 30 meters underground and almost 100 meters from the entrance. To reach them, you first need to navigate a series of incredibly tiny passageways. As we said earlier, this discovery is the most extensive collection of related fossil hominins that has ever been found in Africa, taking into account the sheer number of individuals and the genders and age categories represented. Because just minor portions of both caverns were dug, there are still many bones left for future expeditions to recover. Since the DNA in the Homo naledi bones was too damaged, attempts to extract DNA from them have been fruitless up until this point. The remains are only partially fossilized, so it is believed that DNA extraction should be achievable at some point. Now, before we talk about the relationship Homo naledi shares with other species, here is a fun fact. The word naledi means star in the local Sotho language, in reference to the cave in which the remains were first found. So then, when it comes to their relationships with other species, Although it is acknowledged that Homo naledi is a member of the Homo family, it is challenging to place the species in a comparison with other members of the Homo family due to the large number of parallels and differences that exist between it and other known hominins. It is not actually considered a direct ancestor of modern humans, and there are two scenarios that have been proposed by the discoverers. The first is that Homo naledi belongs near the base of the Homo family, it has several primitive features in its anatomy and is most similar to early Homo species like Homo habilis, Homo rudolfensis, and Homo erectus. This scenario means that Homo naledi evolved about two million years ago and survived, unchanged, for an extended period. The second is that Homo naledi had a more modern ancestor and is more closely related to modern and archaic humans. This means that Homo erectus, another ancient human species, might be a separate and distinct branch of the Homo family tree. In this context, while Homo erectus was once considered a direct ancestor of modern humans, this new theory with Homo naledi's involvement indicates that our evolutionary history might be more complex, 
with multiple branches and species, including Homo naledi and Homo erectus, evolving in parallel but separately. This highlights the diversity and complexity of human evolution, where different species like Homo erectus and Homo naledi could have coexisted and developed distinct characteristics. Now, the lack of fossils from other locations or periods means the debate of whether Homo naledi is a direct ancestor is unlikely to be resolved soon. It is probable that certain archaic human communities existed in the same region as Homo naledi, given the relatively late period of the remains. For example, the Kabwe remains from Zambia and the Florisbad skull from South Africa are examples of such populations. We cannot be absolutely sure, though, that they came into contact with one another or lived nearby. Moving on, let's talk about their appearance. What did they look like? There are some primitive characteristics of Homo naledi that are comparable to those of Australopithecines. These features include the shoulders, hips, and torso. The human-like features of Homo naledi include a lower body, cranial bones, and teeth. Certain functions, such as mobility, using hands, and processing food, are associated with these human-like adaptions. There are even some characteristics of Homo naledi that are unique to this human species. The teeth are tiny and plain, and set in light jawbones. However, the size of the teeth increases towards the back of the mouth, which is a common characteristic of primitive teeth. The mixture of traits of Homo naledi highlights once again the complexity of the human family tree, says human relations expert Professor Chris Stringer. Although their shoulders and fingers were shaped in a way that allowed them to climb trees, the shape of their feet and legs, which were long and slender, suggested that these hominins walked on two feet. Finally, they had skulls that were comparable to these of modern humans, but the size of their brain chamber was far smaller. Now, let's dive into their culture. Rather unfortunately, the cultural aspects of Homo naledi remain largely speculative due to the limited evidence available. However, one of the most remarkable things to note about the way Homo naledi lived was what we would call their burial behavior. The scientists discovered the presence of multiple bodies in a chamber in a cave. It was a deliberate deposition of bodies in a remote, hard-to-reach location, which suggests the possibility of burial practices. This was done with exceptional preservation. The chamber appears inaccessible to large predators, and there is also no evidence of some catastrophe that killed all the individuals inside the chamber. Scientists speculate that it is possible that the bodies were dropped down a chute and fell slowly due to the irregularity and narrowness of the path down or a soft mud cushion to land on. Meanwhile, the fossil site lacked any clues into the diet and lifestyle of those hominins. Homo naledi had smaller teeth and jaw muscles compared to Australopithecines. These hominins did not eat grasses or sedges. A number of Homo naledi teeth had some tooth damage, which supports these hominins eating hard and abrasive foods. Additionally, their ability to navigate both terrestrial and potentially arboreal environments may indicate a capacity to respond to seasonal or environmental changes in food availability. Cultural adaptions could have played a role in the species' survival and distribution of food. Finally, speaking of their technology, the features of Homo naledi's hands and wrists support the theory that these hominins used tools. However, no tools were found among the remains. If these hominins were tool users, these kind of tools are still unknown. Using tools was crucial to technological progress because they let hominins change and connect with their surroundings possibly for making things or processing food. When the Rising Star Cave was found, there was no clear proof of tools being in the chamber. However, the purposeful placement of bodies in a remote area shows that behavior was planned. It raises questions about whether tools or other artifacts accompanied the individuals, potentially serving ritual or practical purposes. Many mysteries still surround the species, including how the remains got into the caves, what its tools were like, and how it survived alongside bigger brain species for such a long period of time. Homo naledi shows us that human evolution wasn't a simple straight line from apes to modern humans. Instead, different human species developed at the same time and sometimes lived together. 
It's thought that modern humans first appeared in southern and eastern Africa around 200,000 years ago. During this time, they might have met Homo naledi. This leads to an interesting question. Could modern humans have had a part in the extinction of Homo naledi?